Hey there, lab rat, Sketch here. I am a wreck. I'm angsty, I'm neurotic, I drink to cover up my social anxiety and existential crisis and also I piss in people's sinks. Because of these things, I am no stranger to depression. Actually, anxiety more often, but there definitely have been days when I woke up wishing I hadn't, and I'm guessing you had them too. Whether it was because of stress, or grief, or puberty, or shame, something overwhelmed you, causing your brain chemistry to shit itself. What follows is a day of crawling from bed, to pills, to bottle, to knife, and generally feeling like you went to a beautiful resort for your honeymoon just to find your wife fucking the tennis coach. Is this video getting a bit grim. Well, anyway, thankfully your brain needs only a few days to wipe its ass and soon you will be up and running again through that fuckfest of regret and guilt you call a life. Hmm. That is if your brain is healthy. If your depression lasts more than a couple of weeks, you're officially clinically depressed. Hope you have fun contemplating suicide, but wait, don't give up yet, because modern medicine's got you covered with pills. Pills, you say? Yes, pills, all with gruesome side effects and questionable efficacy. Wait a minute, what the fuck are you people giving me? Well, before I start hacking away at the theories, I want to talk about what depression is. First of all, depression is a thing. And you'd think that would go without saying, but while I was doing research for this video, I was shocked to see how many people dismiss depression as a state of mind thing. With one guy going so far as to say that all you need to do is pick yourself up and get over yourself. I sincerely hope you're watching this, because this next paragraph is dedicated to you. You sanctimonious cunt. Doctors call depression psychological as opposed to physiological, but it's worth remembering that our psyche is a physiological thing. Yes, we don't yet understand it, because it's much more complex than the rest of our body, but that doesn't mean it's any different. The brain is an organ, just like, say, a liver. And like a liver, your brain has a set of tasks it needs to complete. One of those tasks is dealing and coping with stress when a stressful situation occurs, just like your liver has to break down alcohol when drinking occurs. But if you drink too much alcohol, your liver becomes overwhelmed and suffers damage leading to sickness, and the same thing happens with your brain when overburdened with stress. It becomes overwhelmed, leading to depression. So what determines how much stress someone can take? Well, that's where this analogy kinda breaks down, because while we know what causes liver damage, we don't yet know where the roots of depression lie. We do have theories though, and on that note, bring forth the monoamine theory of depression, the reason why you were prescribed Prozac. The monoamine theory of depression actually turned out to be the serotonin theory of depression, because scientists found that the other two monoamines, dopamine and noradrenaline, have little to do with it. So the theory already has its legs cacked off, but I'll give it a chance, because I'm nothing if not passive-aggressive. Serotonin is a chemical in our brain that, among other things, affects our mood. And I believe, says the theory, that depression is caused by decreased serotonin neurotransmission. So either not enough serotonin is being produced, or there's not enough receptors to fully pick it up, or something fucked up in the middle. All in all, serotonin is isn't being sufficiently transmitted between your brain cells. Okay, why do you think decreased serotonin neurotransmission causes depression? Well, because when depressed people take these drugs called SSRIs, that's your Prozac, which increase serotonin neurotransmission, their depression goes away. Therefore, it must mean that decreased serotonin neurotransmission causes depression. See, what happened here was life gave you lemons and you made lemonade. But this is not good theorizing. You can go on making shit up ex post facto because then it's not really an explanation but a justification. Had it not occurred to you that you could maybe use the lemons to make tequila shots? which come to think of it would be a better treatment for depression in 50% of people. Yes, in 50% of people, SSRIs do nothing to help with depression. They just cause nasty side effects and make the situation even worse. And this is where the theory starts sprouting holes that ooze pharmaceutical companies' lies. If depression is indeed caused by decreased serotonin neurotransmission, why do SSRIs not work for everyone? Chop! And why does it take 4 weeks for their effects to manifest, when they cause an immediate increase in serotonin neurotransmission? According to your theory, SSRIs should work the same way Adderall works for people with ADHD, immediately eliminating the symptoms, but it doesn't. Chop. Looks like this theory is dead. Time to deal the finishing blow. Wait! Screams the limbless theory through coughed up blood. Wow, these videos are getting absurd. So maybe I was wrong about what causes depression, but SSRIs still do help certain people, right? Well, it turns out the only reason why SSRIs help with depression, and this also explains why it takes them 4 weeks to do so, is that they promote what's called neurogenesis in a part of the brain called the hippocampus. This part of the brain has a high concentration of stress hormone receptors that makes it much more prone to stress than the rest of the brain. And if constantly overstimulated, this part of the brain becomes atrophied, and since the hippocampus plays a major role in emotion and memory, it's logical that the symptoms of depression are apathy and lethargy. This is supported by the fact that brain scans show that in depressed people, the hippocampus seems to be smaller by around 10%. It's visibly atrophied, so drugs that promote neurogenesis, i.e. brain renewal, are probably our best bet at treating depression. But with SSRIs, neurogenesis is only a secondary effect, and much more efficient drugs could be made that specifically affect neurogenesis and will have less side effects. Motherfucking chop. 
none of these drugs are on the market yet though, so until then, why not try alcohol as a healthier alternative to suicide? Please subscribe. I feel paralyzed.